Hello, builders. My name is Zhou Ge Kai. Uh, I'm a senior product manager from AWS and user computing. And here with me are Russell and uh, Stefan. Maybe you can introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Stefan Verdi, and I'm a solution architect at Canonical. Canonical is the company behind Ubuntu. And I'm Russell Bell. I'm a special solutions architect uh, for Amazon. Thank you. So uh, we are very excited because we just launched uh, Ubuntu Desktop on Amazon Workspaces this morning. So I want to take this opportunity to introduce this feature and uh, maybe discuss how this feature can empower our builders. So uh, today uh, we're going to talk about for first uh, some common challenges our developers are facing today and how Ubuntu Desktop for Workspaces can help to address. And then uh, Stefan will discuss why Ubuntu is great for open source and for developer. And next, uh, we can do some deep dive on some Ubuntu uh, desktop features uh, that we are very proud of. Uh, and next, we can discuss the configuration, different uh, bundles, and the pricing. Uh, and next, uh, Russell will give a, a live demo so we can see it, how this goes in action. And we will uh, close this session with a Q&A session. Yeah. So let's go next. This one? Okay, nice. Yeah, so I'm sure a lot of audience today are developers or maybe more uh, broadly speaking builders. Um, and as builders, I think we all face some common challenges in terms of uh, dev environment and tools. Uh, for example, um, when we need a new desktop, what we do? We normally submit a ticket uh, and for IT to uh, make a purchase. But sometimes we have to wait a long time, weeks or even months, before we can get the hardware. And because uh, the uh, the uh, uh, transition of this uh, hardware and also the order can take a long time, and also uh, the uh, 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 the cr the problem or really recent uh, uh, economy makes it even worse. That uh, sometimes this is just out of our bu budget. Um, but how Ubuntu Desktop uh, for Workspaces can help to solve this problem? Uh, we'll address this problem by providing a collection of uh, bundles and storage uh, options. And because uh, those bundles and options are in the cloud, there's no need to wait. Um, you pretty much can get a uh, Ubuntu desktop of your choice uh, just in minutes uh, instead of weeks or, or months. And uh, yeah, and similar to other AWS services, uh, there's you can pay as you go and only for what you use. And <clears throat> what's even better is uh, you can access this uh, environment uh, with the client of your choice, uh, including uh, web browsers. And I'm sure that a lot of, lot of developers today prefer to work from home um, or maybe even Hawaii from time to time. But it's kind of a challenge uh, logistically even uh, company policy allows, right? When we work remotely, uh, we don't necessarily have the uh, access to uh, our dev environment at work, whether it's a physical workstation or it's uh, uh, on-premise on VDI. So what we can do? Yeah, some maybe choose to bring a laptop back home, but uh, our IT and the security team might not be very happy uh, because of the security concern. Uh, such as uh, laptop stolen or lost, which has happened more, more often than we thought. So, but with uh, Ubuntu works, Workspace, uh, basically it can enable you to work from anywhere uh, as long as there's internet connection. And because uh, Ubuntu Workspaces is a persistent desktop, you can pretty much uh, pick up where you're left off anytime from anywhere. And your uh, security team or IT, they will also be happy because uh, all the data application, they are in the uh, AWS cloud. And there's, there's uh, no uh, security concern and all the source code 
uh, in transit are merely, merely pixels. And, and next, I think finally, uh, we, I want to talk about the productivity, uh, the challenge for uh, our developers. Because as developer, uh, we are required to quickly build, test, and deploy uh, in multiple environment. Uh, but so having the ability to uh, rapidly spin up and tear down instance is crucial. However, we often uh, hear developers complain, uh, sometimes just during our daily stand up. For example, I can say, oh, I didn't do much yesterday because my dev environment was broken and I'm gonna spend the today, whole day to rebuild it, which is not the best use of our time. Um, and, and also a lot of uh, developers, especially those who use, uh, use their company-issued laptop, they don't actually have a native Ubuntu environment for their development. Uh, instead, they, they are forced to use uh, either a virtual machine or uh, Linux subsystems on other OS, uh, which is not very productive. Uh, with Ubuntu workspaces, uh, in case anything happened to your dev environment, you can choose either restore the workspace to its last known healthy state or rebuild the workspace completely. And you can even rebuild that from a custom image which you create uh, with all the dev settings ready so you don't have to uh, do it again from scratch. And, and yeah, in any case, uh, this whole build and rebuild and restore process is gonna finish in, in minutes uh, instead of days. And also, Ubuntu Workspaces is a native Ubuntu experience. So it's available in 14 regions and providing a maximum performance and minimum latency, so which is always good for productivity. Okay. Uh, so, Stephen, so can you tell us uh, from canonical perspective why, why Ubuntu is a, is a great uh, platform for uh, developer and open source development? Yep, absolutely. So I'll, I'll get started. I have two slides here. I'll get, the first one is about the benefits of open source to developers. If you can go to the next slide, please, Kekai. Um, so as a developer, what benefits do I get when I use open source? Well, first, open source code is widely used um, the largest companies out there leverage open source, they deploy it at scale. So open source code tends to be very well tested. And because it's open source, it's um, free to, for anybody to audit. So a lot of eyeballs is great from a security perspective. So open source code, very reliable, deployed at scale, very secure. Um, but you also get access to the latest technologies. So you know, all of the innovators out there, be they very large company or small startups, or even academics, right? They tend to use open source, build with open source tools and frameworks, and at times contribute uh, their work as open source. So all of the new technology is available more and more as open source, and by leveraging you know, open source, you are you know, able to access the latest technology. All of that collaboration um, that the open source world makes so easy spurs innovation and so it's a, a virtual cycle. Um, cost is the next point I wanted to touch upon. So most open source software is free. So you get no licenses cost or very low licensing costs. And then you also um, don't have to worry about the complexity of tracking licenses. So it's also less work for you as a developer. Uh, next thing I wanted to touch on was time to market. So when you use open source tools, libraries that are already out there. You're basically not in a position where you need to reinvent the wheel. You can leverage the work of others, stand on the shoulders of giants, really. And what that means is you can create whatever solution you're trying to create um, and bring it to market much, much faster. So you get high quality code, but also high velocity. 
Open source is um, the open source ecosystem is huge, right? In in Ubuntu, to give you an example, in Ubuntu repositories we have over forty thousand packages. So that means a lot of choice for you as a developer, a lot of freedom, um, less vendor lock-in, and then the great thing for you as a developer is that you can invest in your career, your own career development. So when you start using um, open source tools, frameworks, and you start building experience, uh, proficiency at it, um, then you can move on to your next employer without worrying about, hey, which proprietary solution are they using? or Are they going to be able to afford the, the, the framework I'm comfortable with? They will, because it's open source, it's available, right? So. As a developer, your skills become transferable and more valuable. Next slide, please. So now that we covered the benefits of using open source as a developer, let's um, talk a little more about Ubuntu and why specifically we think Ubuntu is the developer's choice. So the first thing I wanted to touch upon is um, the fact that Ubuntu is ubiquitous. Ubuntu runs on IoT devices, it runs on desktops, workstations, servers, and the cloud. So as a developer, it doesn't matter what substrate you target, whether you want to run an AI inferencing um, solution at the edge, or you know, a robotics application, or a large um, AI pipeline in the cloud. You have the luxury of being able to develop on the same OS that you're going to deploy uh, your software on. And what that means is the development environment and tools that you're comfortable uh, with on Ubuntu Workspace um, are available on servers, on IoT devices for you to debug if needed. It's a huge productivity gain. Second point I want to touch upon is uh, the richness of the ecosystem, and in particular, that of Ubuntu. So again, in Ubuntu repositories, we have over 40,000 packages. So you're going to get the latest tool chains, regardless of which language you're, you're, you're using or which framework you want to use. Um, I wanted to touch on um, AI and data science. So it's a huge area of, of growth for, for us, and we see our developer, AI developer community growing, uh, probably it's the fastest growing community of Ubuntu developers at the moment, right? Um, Ubuntu is the default choice for AI developers. All of NVIDIA data science tools are available on Ubuntu, and there's a wealth of frameworks available on Ubuntu. So, as a data science or AI developer, Ubuntu is really the platform that's going to make you the most productive. Um, but that's not, I mean, I talked about AI in particular, but again, with so many packages in our repository, it doesn't really matter what you're doing, you will find the best tools, the best ideas for the work you're intending on doing. Now, as a developer, your job is not only to create an application, it's to ensure that the application can be deployed and maintained in production for, for the years to come, right? And so this is probably one of the key aspects of Ubuntu, is predictability. So Canonical releases a new version of Ubuntu, a new long-term supported version, LTS, of Ubuntu every two years. Um, at launch, on AWS Workspace, we have the latest Ubuntu uh, version, which is 2204 desktop. Um, because as part of the AWS Workspace, um, you get actually Ubuntu Pro, you get up to 10 years of support for that version, and you get full security coverage for all of these 40,000 packages I was talking about. So regardless of which packages you use, to build your product, as long as they come, the source code from, comes from an Ubuntu repo or the binaries libraries from an Ubuntu repo, you know you're going to get security patching for the next 10 years. And that is really, really important to give you confidence in your ability to maintain your solution in the long term. And then finally, uh, last thing I want to touch upon is uh, the size of our community. So um, Ubuntu has a great ecosystem of applications, frameworks, tools, and so on, but also a great ecosystem, a great community, sorry, of developers, probably the largest. And what that means is whenever you go to Google or, you know, um, uh, you know Stack Overflow and uh, ask questions, very likely you'll get an answer saying, hey, here is how I do this on Ubuntu. And what that means, again, is that you're going to be able to leverage the help from that community 
and um, overcome hurdles much faster than with any other um, platform. Over to you, Gekai. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, so now let's uh, take a closer look at uh, Ubuntu Workspace features. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, Ubuntu Desktop for Workspaces is a fully managed service. It's available in 14 AWS regions uh, so that you can pick the, the one like, close to you and or with the uh, minimum latency. And you can spin up a tear down uh, instance just in minutes and pay as you go. And the, the, the Ubuntu sub, uh, Workspaces support SAML 2.0 so that you can uh, access your workspace by authenticating to the IDP of your choice. And uh, the Active Directory support is done via SSSD. And you can even manage your uh, Ubuntu workspaces with uh, group policy uh, using a component called 8sys. And self-service management is another feature that's very, very good for developers because you can uh, optimize the volume size, uh, change your uh, disk size basically, and uh, change the compute type and running mode or rebuild the workspace as I just mentioned, uh, all by yourself. Uh, you know, there's no need to ask IT to help. And another feature is the custom image that uh, I also touched earlier. It can ac accelerate your dev environment setup so you don't, you don't have to set up the environment every time uh, from scratch. And the WSP uh, streaming protocol is the uh, protocol that uh, we are using. It supports uh, 4K display, multiple monitor, and webcam redirection. Yeah, very rich uh, feature set. And uh, Ubuntu Workspaces is uh, built on uh, Ubuntu Pro 22.04, uh, which is the latest Ubuntu version, uh, as just mentioned. And uh, it's running a genome desktop. And also, uh, the uh, image itself uh, includes the a lot of popular runtimes like Python, Node.js, Go, et cetera, and all the server components, uh, popular server components, uh, as you can see, Apache or Nginx, and so on. And AWS SDK and command line interface, they are pre-installed uh, so that you can start to build on AWS uh, right away. And other Productivity and development tools are available uh, through Snap Store uh, from Canonical and also uh, other app uh, repo as well. And uh, also, that mentioned that uh, uh, Ubuntu Workspaces come with Ubuntu Pro benefit. Uh, we can, yeah, maybe uh, dive deep, deeper into that uh, later. Yeah. And uh, uh, here is the uh, diagram for Workspace. And uh, this diagram, pre pretty much architecture diagram, assume that customer managing their own uh, Active Directory uh, in their uh, corporate network, and uh, which is the orange box uh, on the uh, left bottom corner. And on the right side, uh, the that orange box is the AWS cloud. And there are two VPCs in this uh, uh, box. On the upper side is the uh, uh, service APC, uh, VPC, which is managed by uh, uh, Workspace Service. And on the bottom is the customer VPC. And uh, each uh, workspace uh, has two uh, network interfaces. Uh, the first network interface is connected to uh, service VPC. Uh, it's kind of handling all the uh, uh, streaming traffic. And the other uh, network interface is connected to uh, customer VPC. Uh, responsible for other uh, traffic. And if you look at that uh, right lines, that's the, the uh, authentication uh, network traf traffic flow. Uh, so customer first uh, authenticate through uh, authentication gateway, uh, which send the authentication re request to uh, customer uh, AD uh, on their uh, network and get the uh, authentication back. And once authenticated, uh, the user can start streaming uh, through that uh, streaming gateway. So that's uh, a, a rough uh, architecture. Okay, so um, here is the uh, availability of uh, 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 Ubuntu Workspaces. It's available in uh, 14 AWS regions, as I mentioned. And we provide uh, five bundle types, 
uh, ranging from uh, one CPU, two gigabytes of memory to uh, uh, eight CPU, 32 gigabytes of memory. And each uh, bundle type also offer four storage uh, configurations. And we also have two uh, graphic uh, G4DN basis, uh, based graphic bundles available uh, pretty soon. Okay, and on the bottom you can see there's a pricing uh, table. So we give some examples of uh, some bundle pricing uh, and also compare the Ubuntu uh, bundle price with uh, the Windows license included uh, bundles and Amazon Linux bundles. So you can see pretty much Ubuntu is in the middle. Okay, now it's the fun part. <laughs> so, uh, Russell, do you mind uh, give a live demo? Absolutely. We will uh, make sure the demo Gremlins doesn't get us here, but we're ready to show the demo. Cool. So I have already logged into my Ubuntu workspace, uh, cut out the typing that I do and all the mistyping. Again, with workspaces, as Gekai mentioned, you'd get all the same functionality that you would today with, with our current bundles being able to rebuild, change your compute type, change the disk size on the fly. As well as Gekai mentioned, we have the AWS CLI pre-installed. So here I've configured my security keys and I just did a simple describe workspaces to show you that I can pull that back fairly easy. Also, uh, as mentioned by Stefan, we do have the capabilities now to run most of the common IDEs on this. So such as uh, VS Code here, just running some PowerShell to describe the bundles that I have available in my account. Uh, that'll take just a minute to run, but then you can see we can pull that back. Uh, or if you want to do uh, our Python SDK and use PyCharm to go out and maybe create a workspace. One of the other use cases that we heard a lot about uh, that I'm happy to show today uh, is being able to run Docker. Uh, on workspaces. So here uh, I want to show that uh, I do have Docker installed. Just need to elevate really quick. And now you can see I have Docker installed and along with that comes some other open source utilities. Uh, one of the ones that I'm using today to manage the Docker container containers that I have running is Portainer. So with Portainer you can see the containers that you have running. Uh, you can deploy from their library, or you can actually go out to Docker Hub and pull down a container. So here I'm going to deploy the latest Python container from Docker Hub. Make some other quick adjustments here in the interface, and we're going to deploy this. And here in a moment you can see I now have that container running. Now with Portainer you can do things like view logs of that container, view statistics, such as CPU, memory, disk I.O., also jump into the console. One of the other things I want to show quickly is the ability to integrate with other services, such as Amazon's Elastic Container Registry, or ECR. So I will show real quick. I have a demo repository that does not have any images in it whatsoever. Uh, again, I tried to make this very easy. I wrote a quick script that is going to go out, connect to the registry, tag the image that I downloaded, that Python image, pretending that we've done some things to it, and then we're gonna start the copy process up to the Elastic Container Registry. This does take just a moment, as you can see the lines going through there. Uh, we should have that copied up in just a second, and then I will bounce back over to the registry to show you that we have the image there ready to use with other services uh, if you need to. Almost there. Awesome, that should be done now. And if I come over here and refresh, uh, we can see we have now my image sitting there waiting to use. So wanted to give you a quick demo uh, of Python or of Ubuntu and how we can uh, help integrate with your developers, make them more productive and any other user that may want to use Ubuntu. Okay, Kai, I will uh, turn it back over to you to wrap this up, sir. Thank you, thank you, Russell, yeah. Let me see what's next. Yeah, so uh, you have seen the, the demo, uh, which is great. Uh, and you have seen us talking for a while. And you might wonder, okay, how do I get started? So uh, first of all, I want to announce that Ubuntu Desktop for Workspaces are uh, gonna offer uh, a free tier uh, for each uh, work, uh, Workspaces customer. 
uh, you can have like up to five Ubuntu performance bundle for free for six months. Uh, so that uh, can give you a, a good start uh, to start using the, uh, this new feature that we're already very proud of. And uh, uh, next, if you uh, go to our AWS portal, uh, you can log on to uh, Amazon Workspaces and start to uh, build your own uh, uh, Ubuntu Workspaces. Okay, great. Uh, that's, I think that's all, but uh, any questions so far? Oh, before, actually before we go to the question, uh, there's a few question I think uh, uh, a customer often asks us, uh, so let's maybe try to answer those questions together. Uh, I think one of the question is, uh, I think you just demonstrate the Docker, but uh, there are people always ask, can I run Docker on workspaces? What should I do? What should I not do so that I can run Docker? Yeah. Yeah. So the big thing is to make sure as you're configuring the network of your Docker containers, they don't overlap with your current networking in your environment. Is one of the big uh, hiccups we see sometimes. Yeah, thank you. Another question I think is uh, is about Ubuntu, the version we are using, right? Ubuntu Pro. So people might uh, wondering okay, what's the uh, benefits that this uh, Ubuntu Pro can can give. Yeah. Absolutely. So yes, the version of Ubuntu that runs in uh, AWS Workspace is Ubuntu Pro, and what that means is you get that extended security uh, patching coverage that I mentioned. So. Um, all of the 40,000 packages that are in the Ubuntu ecosystem, you're going to get security updates for them for the next 10 years. Uh, another uh, benefit of Ubuntu Pro is kernel live patch. So you can patch your kernel without having to restart your workspace, reboot your workspace, right? And then the third thing I want to touch upon is FIPS. So if you are in a you know, a vertical where FIPS is uh, mandatory, you can actually use FIPS on Ubuntu Workspace. Yeah, that's good. Great, I think we can uh, maybe close this session and hope you're enjoying this, uh, this content. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone, thank you.